Good morning, everyone. Yet, who suffer from the ills of modernity comes a theor therapeutic session of melodiousness commences on YouTube right now. Today is 2019, December 23rd, Monday, 11 o'clock in the morning, San Francisco time. Welcome, everyone. And today, we don't have a topic, and the topic is going to be random. Okay, good morning, Justin, Justin Scarfi, and uh, Matt. Matt, you changed your name. Is that, is that your real name or nickname? And good morning, Freddy. Matt, Freddy from Germany. Good morning, Magpie from uh, Nicaragua. And Justin Scarfi, where are you from? And Justin Scarfi sent me an email, interesting email. By the way, do I know you? Do we know each other, Justin Scarfi? And uh, can I tell people what you sent me? Uh, because that's an interesting email with photos. Uh, good morning, Alan. So today I don't have a topic, and uh, then it's going to be random. But I'm thinking the first 20 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about uh, number systems, number systems, space 5, space 6, space 7, space 1000. Okay, we're going to talk about number systems, how that works. That is called positional system, Arabic uh, numerals. That's what we use, Arabic number system. Posi it's a, a in in a category of positional system. Uh, okay, so uh, yes, <laughs> uh, nickname. So uh, so Justin Scar uh, Scarfi. So you still there? Uh, okay, so let's talk about things now. Someone bought this keyboard. Now, is that is this one suitable to your test taste, Alan? So this one is wireless mechanical keyboard. Uh, uh, some nameless brand, okay? Velaso Fire, Velaci Fire, something something. Eighty-seven keys, ten key, ten keyless. What an idiotic jargon from the keyboard nerds. Ten keyless. Uh, the proper name is compact, okay? Compact. Compact and with white lead and uh, quiet brown Cherry MX switches. Uh, quiet brown switches, not necessarily Cherry MX. So this one, and if you like it, you can go and buy. Oh, it's only forty-six dollars, cheap, cheap, guys, cheap. So you buy it, you go to Xali Keyboard Blog, okay. Xali keyboard, search it, and you'll find my keyboard blog, and you buy it right away. So I'm going to paste the link here, and you can find the uh, you know my Amazon. So, so let me pop the this window out, and we're gonna talk about sundry topics, diversity, very interesting. So there it is, the keyboard, and. Okay, so and and keyboard, you know, keyboard. Uh, once we talk about keyboards, it's gonna be non-stop for ten hours. But let's stop. Uh, not today. Maybe not today, cause we got so many other topics. Okay, so that's that is about that keyboard, and someone bought a Korean vocabulary book. <laughs> okay, so those of you who are learning vocabulary, learning a foreign language the language of the people you don't know then you learn you you perhaps this is a good book i don't know but actually alan can suggest us quite a few books on languages because alan is a certified expert in linguistics uh you know meaning he, he's got a degree a uh, post uh, graduate degree at least you know he's just studying um, masters or phd something so Alan, so so this book, if you want to buy that book, you go to you go to Wordy English, the wordiness of English, English, the verbosity, the you know the 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 ears of the English. Okay, you go to Wordy English, the lure of vocabulary, the depth of literature, 
the question of style, the logic of linguistics, the yields of English, and the cure by writing. That is what you should do. That's、uh, English. You take geek on languages and linguistics, and from the haughty emotions of lexicon, stylistic concerns, decipherment of grammar and idioms, linguisticality, literature and logicality. That is what this is all is about. And if so, if you want to learn Korean, buy book. No money, no pay, no gain. Okay, pay and you gain. Uh, as opposed to the open source, you never gain anything. <laughs> Instead, you got Google and Facebook. Google, man, Google guys, Google Linux, yeah, Linux and all. It's fantastic free software foundation. And you got Google and Facebook, who watches your bedroom photos every minute of it. Uh, okay, so that's that is that that is that those about those things you buy and what is the next thing? Okay, so I bought this yesterday, thanks to you guys' donations. Okay, this is a this is a, you know hard drive, external hard drive, two terabytes, terabytes, two terabytes. Okay, and it's it's very small. It's smaller than your phone and、uh, actually lighter than your phone, about half. Half the weight of an iPhone or something, and I plugged in, plugged it in, and it works fantastic. By the way, they, you know, on this on this hard drive, they give me a secure code, secure code, and reset code. What what are those? Do you guys know? Secure code and reset code. Okay, let me see if I can show you. Okay, hold on a second. Secure code and reset code. What 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 does 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 that mean? You know, it's got this secure code and reset code. Do you do you guys know what that means? Tell me. Okay. I teach you something. You teach me something. Quit pro quo. Okay, that's about that. And shall we get into start to talk about the number systems? So you know, once you go to the Wordy English blog, then you find a a a, a multitude of interesting things. So many interesting things. Okay, diphthong. You guys know what is a diphthong? Diphthong. Diphthong and noise. Noise. <laughs> This is the term of the crash hacker. Noise. Something, something. Oh, that's noise.、Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see the comments.、Uh, what you guys are talking about, and we have quite a lot of things to talk about.、Uh, depending on where we want, where we want to go, and this, this is, you know, the USB cables. They are becoming so many varieties. It's confusing. USB two, USB three, mini USB plug, mini something, female, male, <laughs> and、uh, you know it's 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 a wonder the social justice have not replaced the term for female and male cables yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know they are policing the programming language, master slave, and all that sort of thing, and they, I I I I don't think there is a Push to replace the male and female cable thing yet. Male and female, how fitting. Okay, so let's see the comments. Okay, so you look like a cookie monster. Oh, do I? Do I look like like a cookie monster? Mmm, gap, 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 cookie monster. Um, nickname. Okay, um. In blue shirt, you don't eat cookies. Very strange. Hi Matt. I think tanky is good to have, especially if you do things like blender. Yes, indeed. <coughs> yeah, but if you, you know, if you, you know, so I talked about this before. If you find, um, where, where, where is that? Um, we open last closed one key press. Okay, so, so, so if you, um. 
yeah so the problem to solve with, with this compact key keyboard is that you you can buy a programmable keypad and that that's gonna be fantastic because you can program your firmware I talked about this uh, quite a few times in my in my blog okay in my so for example you go to my keyboard blog you go to uh, keypads then you will find a list of the best programmable keypads so if you don't have the 10 you know if you don't have a full-size keyboard then you can just get one of these and it's programmable but it's fantastic and some of these they got displays on the keys and it turns out they are not too expensive like $150 uh, I mean relatively not too expensive so uh, you you buy a programmable keypad okay it's a good companion even even with um, even with my Kinesis you see I have a keypad in the middle but however this one is not programmable so I programmed uh, via the operating system so you know I got 1,000 things to say about keyboard if that's a topic we want to go to because then I'm gonna tell you besides programmable keypads then I'm going to tell you about what if you are a cheapo you don't have money to buy a programmable keypad well in that case you buy a go to the best numeric keypad so you you get one of these numerical keypads they are not programmable but they are much cheaper the programmable ones are like 50 60 70 dollars okay uh, this one 150 or something and this one 70 dollars something 70 80 dollars okay 40 dollars something like that so those are programmable meaning that the, the you can program the keys in the firmware so when you press a key the the keyboard sends the signal directly to the OS so they you so you don't the advantage of that is that you don't have also the problems like oh it doesn't work in this app or, or the OS eat ate it ate your keyboard signal because for example on the Mac the Mac you know people they like to control things they don't let you to have you know uh, num lock key for example things like that so they they rewire in the Mac OS deep down to change your keys so your app never see the key you pressed it, it becomes something else so it's a problem so the programmable keyboards solves that problem because the keyboard sends the signal whatever you want it to send directly to the OS so but if you are a cheapo you don't yeah oh I don't I'm a student I'm a postdoc I'm a <laughs> I'm a you know uh, I'm a student then you buy one of these um, you just buy a numeric keypad twenty dollars ten dollars so there, there's there are some even five dollars ones so you buy this then you program via the operating system then I have an article on that how to program number keypad as function keys you see so you can you can do this via operating system uh, on, in Microsoft Word I mean in Microsoft Windows you use auto hotkey uh, on Linux you use a bunch of things okay Linux is the most complex fuck in the universe in, in, it's it's not just complex okay it's it's uh, the, the the worst shit you're gonna spend hours into it and uh, there are multiple ways depending on your distribution even within a distribution there are multiple ways and multiple programs you 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 app manager you know you download it try it doesn't work oh it didn't work it didn't this 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 that this that and you go to stack overflow and the messages you see are 10 years old tutorials and answers 10 years old <laughs> but I have a guide well written uh, on how to do that on Linux okay so you can read you know it's 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 uh, it's it's a entire set of articles 10 20 articles on how do you bind keys on Linux so anyway we are talking about programming the numerical keypad via the tools in operating system so you have Microsoft solutions you just use auto hotkey okay I know some of you uh, I've encountered a lot of people they'll say oh uh, auto hotkey is too much uh, too bloated they just want something uh, well if you are into key binding I mean if you are into efficiency if you're gonna 
dive into this just use auto hard key don't use any other just one single program auto hard key for windows okay and that is what reaper uses reaper <laughs> reaper in our group he has written he told me he has written like a uh, thousand lines or ten thousand lines of auto hard key <laughs> that's that's something so microsoft windows use auto hard key on and Linux, it's you got a bunch of you know tools or GUI and stuff, and you and on the Mac, it's the most simple of them all, it, you know. And I have an article on that, but let's not get into it. Anyways, on the Mac, you just use um, Carabiner, okay? That's the one, pretty much. There are quite a few others that's very useful and very powerful. You have, for example, let me let me show you, okay? So first of all you have operating system basics built in by the operating system that allows you to swap caps lock control option command keys things like that simple that's if that's what you want to do if you want to get more complex like macros and stuff then carabiner okay uh, if you want to Okay, then, then there's a keyboard shortcut for launching apps and so on. This is built in in the Mac, but it's got problems. It's not as powerful. It's got uh, quite, a, quite a few problems. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, you know, of, of these things, I've been tech geeking on them for, for the past 15 years. Okay, so I know the stuff, okay. Uh, ign ignore your own opinions, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know you have an opinion. You know it. Uh, take my opinion. Supplant it with my opinion. So anyway, on on programmable key, uh, keyboards. Oh yeah. So be, you know, besides using these solutions, the best is just actually get a programmable keyboard. That is, you program the keys in the firmware, not via the operating system. Okay, then on the Mac you have app launchers and you have several uh, great tools. Okay, ha Hammer Spoon, I heard is very good. Alfred, I heard is very good, but I haven't used them. Keyboard Maestro is classic. It's like 15, 15 20 years old, uh, but they charge you. They like $30. Um, you know, so I, you have quite a lot. And USB Overdrive is also very good, and which actually... Unlike the other, the, the USB overdrive, they they allows you to um, in, intercept the USB signals. Okay, so you can I've used this app; it's pretty good, but I don't use it now uh, because I try to. You know, these days I try to not use any of these auto hot key or 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 or. or um, or the Linux X X Smart Map. I don't. I don't. I try to avoid them at all because. Okay, there's a lot to go into. I can tell you why in detail. That's gonna be another ten or twenty minutes. Uh, but anyway, so on the Mac, you. You have okay, so you have then you have these keyboard tools, Carabina. You know, it tells you the event. Tell you tells you what uh, key you are pressing. Now, which one is it? Let me see. Okay, so Carabina launch event viewer so you're gonna buy this okay actually so do i have a link uh yeah i do but it's um then i'm gonna get out of my pen my tablet pen with my tablet here and i haven't i need to read the comments but i haven't done so yet so you see my tablet, you can see, ooh, ooh. there it is. Uh, okay, anyway, so back to, so I was telling you about how you should get a programmable keypad. And, but if you are, uh, if, if you don't want to spend that much money, you get a numeric keypad and then you program it via operating system then i show you how to okay all this is in my uh xa emacs i mean xa keyboard blog 
you will find it in this uh, keypad section okay okay let me read the comments then let's see where we go and uh, check we talked for 20 minutes okay uh, is it blue switches but not loud and uh, it's blue switches but not not loud okay so required so I think ten key so I have recently got a nice mecha mechanical keyboard from Habit okay yeah uh, they sent me a keyboard by the way I kind of reviewed it a month ago Habit check the low profile yes low profile key uh, uh, thin switches which is right here okay do I have a photo oh I need to take a personal photo but oh yeah there it is so it's right there this one thing the key are very thin okay oh yeah, th there is my photo but it's not a this is not a good photo okay so but anyway you see it's a very thin keyboard use this I think this switch is called chocolate switch or something So that's have it. Uh, and I have to say it's my first keyboard really like. Okay, Freddie, Freddie Freeman. Uh, I like 10 keyless, uh, Razer Black Window, Black Widow. Yeah, Razer Black Widow. Razer is no good. Okay, don't buy Razer. <laughs> Magpie, Magpie, don't buy Razer. Okay, return it. <laughs> Razer is the worst shit possible. Uh, their product, they abuse. You know, they, they they their audience is the gamers, basically ignorant gamers, uh, gamers who you know teenagers who idolize, you know, the gaming stars. So they want, oh, you you need you need to play games. You want to be the champion, and so therefore you need to get this keyboard and so on. You know, lots of marketing jargons, this and that. Razor. And their keyboard, and you know, it's the worst. Okay, I mean, the they force you to use their internet, you know, software. Otherwise, your keyboard won't work. Like they say, they would say, okay, here for example, let me show you. Never buy Razer. Never buy Razer. Razer anything. Okay, why? Because they their keyboard. They first of all, their price is much higher than competitors than Logitech than Cooler Master or the other game game gaming makers okay their price is higher and the the worst thing is that they force you to you know they say oh we 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 this keyboard is programmable and blah 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 but however you need to have their driver running otherwise all your programmable program the, the keys you program does not work you have to have the driver on the computer you are using so in other words you 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 program your keys you take it to work doesn't work nothing works your program keys nothing work they, you know that's razor they f actually they force it wasn't like that but they intentionally made it that way so that why so that you they it's not only required that you use their that 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 the razor driver is present but also they require you to have a internet account to their cloud to talk to their server so they have all your data why do they do that because they can they sell your data they get mass amount of data you know and they can sell it and and also they remove for example they they could they remove memory in the keypad for example so they they save money they remove the memory, memory, you know, the the physical memory in a keypad. They, they save money, so they require you. That's why they require you to have a driver software present. So they save to your hard disk, you know, all your key settings, or they save it to the cloud. That's what they do. So Razer is the worst shit possible. Never buy Razer. And that and and that's not not that's not all. And and from the for example, from keyboard experts' point of view, for those people who knows key switches, uh, who knows um, let's see design, okay, keys, key, key switch, their quality, what type they are, you know, Razer is just no good.
Okay, Alan says I bought that book. Must have left. <laughs> oh my God! So Alan bought this book, this Korean book. Uh, wait. So Alan. Okay. So Korean vocabulary book. A topic. Now, since Alan bought it, I have to pay attention because this must be a reason, a good book, a, you know, reasonably good book because Alan bought, <laughs> bought it. <laughs> so this is Korean vocabulary book, a topic-based approach. Okay. So it says the Korean vocabulary book contains more than 3,000 words and phrases which are grouped by topic to make it easier for you to, p to pick what you uh, what to learn first. On top of that, the index in the second half of the book provides you with a basic Korean English as well as English Korean dictionary. Oh, okay. So guys, buy this book. Increase your knowledge, increase your communication skills to people you don't know, foreign people. And uh, be multicultural, okay? You, you need to be multicultural in modern society. Okay, so uh, <laughs> with my Amazon code, okay, Al Alan, stop doing, don't, don't do that, okay? When people start to do that, I gonna get into trouble. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, if I have a link to some product, that's good. If you want to buy something that's not there, that's okay. Don't you know? Don't don't push for it. Thank you, though. Uh, yeah, because Am it's it's part of the Amazon rule. You know, they they gonna ban you. Um, so that's okay, actually. Not with the uh, uh, so Freddie says that's okay, actually. Not with the considering if this keyword uh, twenty euro. Okay, twenty euro above my budget. Uh, what? So Matt says, can you shortly elaborate on polymorphism on in functional programming languages? Yes, indeed. I'm an expert on that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So let me talk about polymorphism. The entire lurid history and detail of polymorphism and all the, you know, the all the ignorance and babbling among programmers on polymorphism. Okay, so let me read the comments first. The magpie says, oh, I see, so yeah, I, I want to, uh, okay. So what mystery is on a small black box in Xar's hands? Oh, this, no, it's just my backup, okay. It's mostly, my the most important backup for me is my website. Well, I used to be a pack rat, you know, you, sometimes you run into people. Uh, let, okay, let me, let me tell you, Stephen Wu Fan. log okay personal log let me talk about this guy which i talked about quite a few times now this article the personal the personal analytics of my life this is stephen wolfram guys he is the creator of mathematica the greatest programming language ever uh, and you know he he coded it. You know, uh, thirty years ago he coded it. It was written in C. So Mathematica today, as far as I know, at least ten year, twenty years ago, it's written in C, C plus plus, and Mathematica. Mathematica is basically in the family of Lisp languages. So they share many characteristics. Uh, in fact, Mathematica is a Lisp. They share many characteristics, including how they are implemented. So typically in a Lisp language, it's implemented in C and Lisp. Okay, the core is in C or C, well, sometimes C plus plus a, a little bit. Then, then the rest of it, like eighty percent, is is Lisp, the language itself. Same with Mathematica. The core is in C. Uh, I think they 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 may have moved to C plus plus. I mean. To, this is 20 years ago, so they have grown a lot, so I don't know um, what they are doing now. But anyway, so the core is in C or C++, but the rest 80% is in Mathematica itself. 
So Stephen Wolfram created that, and he also is the creator of Mathematica. I mean, the Wolfram Alpha, kind of the algorithmic artificial intelligence, uh, which is uh, you know. Anyway, so he he wrote a blog, and his blog is usually very long, like uh, forty pages. Okay, <laughs> each one of his his blog is thirty pages. And this guy is a nut job. He's extreme. Okay, he is extreme in many ways. He is extreme. I mean, he's a great programmer. He's a great entrepreneur. You know, he. So he, he's one of the best programmer. We can say that a genius sort of. He's actually a certified genius because when he was、uh, seventeen or so, he got a PhD from Cambridge or fifteen or something like that. Then when he was eighteen or nineteen, he got. MacArthur Award, which is MacArthur Genius Award. Literally, the title is MacArthur Genius Award. I think that's a title. <laughs> so he's a certified genius. So he's good. You know, he he program. He's one of the best programmer at least back then. I, he still do programming. Okay, unlike the Richard Stallman fuckhead, the Richard Stallman who have not coded any line of code for for fifteen years. But he's like、uh, Richard Stallman. It's a quite. It's a. It's a. It's kind of what worthless, almost worthless today. And and now he got kicked out by social justice warriors, just like that, <laughs> just just like that. And he's like, oh, I'm okay with it. The fuck, Richard Stallman. Uh, you know, do, doesn't know how to code and no idea. No,、uh, he doesn't understand e- economics. He、uh, does doesn't understand how society works. All he got, the Richard Stallman. All he got is that when he happened to have this idea, kind of communist idea about free software foundation, and he just pushed for it. That that's that's what happens. That's you know some people. You know, you look at history. Quite a few people are like that. They don't. They 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 haven't got anything. Uh, but they happens to have. You know, they 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 believe. You know, they all they have is a strong belief in is in certain idea, and they push for it. That's Richard Stallman, and he made history,、uh, li- literally made history. So that's Richard Stallman. But he is ignorant about a- about、uh, anything. So anyway, back to Stephen Wolfram. So he's a great programmer. He also, you know, he's 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 also a great businessman. He made Mathematica, and he. Run this company become very successful and and notice there's、uh, something interesting. He most companies most entrepreneurs when their company is big they sell it. In the American capitalism system, you sell it, it becomes so called public company, which means it belongs to everyone. Okay, so but then then the company the way company functions is that by stocks, you know whoever you can own. You can own a piece of Microsoft. You can own a piece of this. You can own a piece of Google. You can own a piece of Facebook. And the owners decide what to do. You know, you hire CEOs, then you can fire them. That's most entrepreneurs. You know, once they got money, they sell it. You know, that's most people do. But Stephen Wolfram, again, he's an unusual. He's kind of freakish. He's my type. Okay, I like him. So he he doesn't sell. He he. I'm not. You know. He's not going to sell、uh, the Wufan research to the become a public company. You know because he want. He is a. He has got. A, he's got a vision. You know. He this guy's got a vision for humanity. I mean, n- not in a bad way. Not not in like、uh, you know like、uh, he's gonna be a Darth Vader control everything. No. But he. But anyway, he's. He's one of the person who's got a vision for how things should be and the way he like the way things are, like me. Okay, <laughs> so you know, so he's got a vision and he, you know, and he's、uh, able to 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 execute that vision. So he runs Wufan Research and he wanted tightly controlled, like every detail he has full control of it. You know, as opposed to it becomes a public company. Then, you know, like usually in in USA at least, 
when you have a public company, uh, things go bad. Things things go south. Like Google becomes so evil, you know, uh, because money. Basically, a public company is mo money. Money is controlling things, and 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 not in a precise way. It's like all, all kind of uh, complexities. You know, your once your a company becomes public, it becomes like, you know, it it becomes like a you know a a a leaf in ocean. It 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 goes you know in its own way randomly. But he tightly control his company. He want you know everything to be the way he wants. You know, so anyway, back to his blog. He wrote this article. You know, he's uh, this article, my per the personal analytics of my life, and this article is one of the many. You know, he's got lots of blogs. Each one you take, you take hours to read it in detail. Okay, and you read this one. So he is. So what is he doing? What is he talking about in this blog? Is that he log his personal life? For example, we keyboard warriors, we log our keystrokes. Like I tell you guys to log your keystrokes. So after ten years, you actually know how many keystrokes you actually type, not the typical 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 programmers saying, "Oh, I think I think you should remap caps lock to control." Idiots. Okay, those typical Emacs hackers or whatever Linux hackers. Idiot. So so you you want to log your keystrokes, okay? But not just that. He, you, you also log, log. For example, today you have Fitbit's watch. It logs, you know, what time you went to bed. You know, uh, what's your heartbeat. You know, you can have a log of it for ten years. You know, you can, you can know precisely uh, three years ago, how many days ago, at 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 particular time, what's your heartbeat. You can know that. Today with technology, so this guy Stephen Wolfram, he does that. He log his life by technology. Okay, this is before. Now remember, this is before the era of phones. You know, phones came about ten years ago. Let's say fifteen years ago. Then you started to have you know iPhone, then then watch, then you can log your things or so key logs. For example, key logs today is very popular. You go to my website, you will find an article where I list. All the uh, software for key logging. Okay, for example, over here, uh, typing habits, repetitive strain injury, uh, key logs. Okay, so somewhere here. Okay, so you just search for log. Uh, okay, so it's not here. Actually, it's in the software section. Software. You search for log. Okay, there is uh, several articles. Key logging and security. So list of key logging software. And today it's popular. You know, you you download those, you can log your keys. But remember, this guy Stephen Wolfram, he's you know before this is popular, he's doing these kind of things. So you read this, he you read his um, blog, you see all the kind of things he log about, and he make a plot of it. You know, for example, this is his sleeping time since 1990. <laughs> okay, guys, from 1990 to 2012, this is his sleeping schedule. So as far as sleeping goes, he's pretty normal. Okay, so he sleeps during, uh, let's see, uh, 12, 12 to 9, kind of, 12, you know, midnight. He begins to sleep at around midnight. Then around 2002, he sleep around... 9 a.m. No, wait. Uh, what is this? Anyway, that that you know, you 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 have to read it in detail. So his sleeping time and his what is this average by month daily uh, outgoing emails. Okay, then you can see his email log. He measure it, analyze it, statistics. His email since 1990. You know, he can see his email count. How many email he got per day, things like that, or how many emails he sent per day? Then you got his uh, distribution of email per day. Okay, then you got his uh, monthly distinct email recipient. Okay, so then you got you know he got, he 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 got lots of logs. 
this is you know 20 pages he, here is his keystrokes okay he he logged his keystrokes since 2002 so he logged a, a lot of that so why am I talking about him because I was going to say I used to do this okay I'm that type of guy I used to do this similar to him so I have I have on my hard disk at least I used to have all the emails I sent you know since since 1991 all the emails all the communications I talked you know on news groups on forums it's all logged okay but life went bad around 2012 I don't have money I was about to go homeless so all is lost all is lost now it's just a mess so I don't have a backup for 10 years but now I'm starting to get a bit better so I now I have, get, I have this so I was yeah so I was saying you know so the most important thing here right now is just my website my my 7,000 pages website but I used to have for example all my emails emails in the past 30 years they kind of half of them are gone gone somewhere I don't know like like you like this is pretty bad you know like about seven eight years ago I it's pretty bad like I don't have ten dollars twenty dollars to buy a USB drive so that's a situation I uh, anyway so that that's Stephen Wolfram okay yep and uh, we are going to talk about polymorphism <laughs> I don't know if Matt is here yet Matt are you still here yet polymorphism so I'm going to explain what that is polymorphism okay so I, let me start to explain then but uh, but uh, but then but then I have a lot of comments here am I missing something so let me see what the comments address to me so did you ever use the automation tool on Mac OS Apple script no uh well I did I use I did use it for a little bit around 1999 to let's say yeah well anyway around 1997 to, to 19 uh, to, to, to 2000s let's say let's say so Apple script is a automation tool okay so in fact you can see it they have this icon let me show you however it's never actually uh, much used okay wait did I did they did they even remove the icon do you guys see it I don't see it okay <laughs> I, I guess it's so it's so outdated I mean it's 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 so unpopular they removed the icon yeah I don't see it they have an icon for the Apple script thing should I show it? let's let's try to show it okay actually yeah, I don't want to show it so Apple script is a script for automation it's based on the there's an underlying engine but anyway that technology never went far okay never um, and I always wanted to know it more but I, I I did have several scripts back then I, I use it every day but that, that technology never uh, went it never become very popular the Apple script automation tool it's pretty cool but it never uh, took off so any comments to me any question to me okay say uh, put my name to it so here is one Freddie says did you know Twitter implemented donation donation buttons with bad coins oh they did Twitter oh really wow I have to look into that thank you uh, I didn't know okay so if you want to talk to me put my name to it orange so I can see it okay now let me talk let me tell you about polymorphism now polymorphism it's a jargon it's an idiotic jargon okay polymorphism 
you know, I, I could start to show you code because when, if I start to show you code, it's going to be more clear. But, but right now, the languages I have, Golang, Golang, JavaScript, Python, uh, they don't really have polymorphism, okay? So let me tell you what it is, okay? Poly, when you write a function, let's see, let's, let's, let me give you an example, okay? Okay, so let me give you an example, po what, what polymorphism mean? So let's say you want a f uh, to write a function plus, okay? Uh, define plus. Okay, so A, B. Let's say you want to do that. Okay. And uh, then, you see, then if the A and B are numbers, then you do something. You, you can say uh, return Uh, okay, so uh, let's 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 try JavaScript then. Okay. Uh, let's let, let's say that. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. So let's say if if you are defining a function a plus b, if a and b are numbers, then you do that, return a plus b, right? Now, but however, you also want this function to work on vectors, okay? For example, if a, uh, if a, r, b, okay, so for example, if a, r, a and b are vectors or array, then do vector addition, okay? So in this case, you're gonna be, you know a zero so so for example the result is going to be um something like that right you see so you guys see what i mean so you want this function to you know the function is called plus but you want it to work on numbers as well as vectors so instead of so in, as opposed to as as, uh, as opposed to writing a uh, a separate function you see what i mean so w why do you want to just one function because then plus can be mean can the arguments can be numbers real numbers or they can be complex numbers or they can be vectors or they can be matrices you know different data you know but the idea is the same you want to add them together plus a function now so this is a common need this is a common problem occurrence where you want to write a function that but uh, with different data types you know makes sense so so how so one solution one solution which now today we have this idiotic name polymorphism e extreme idiotic name why, why does this name came from because they came from the imperative oper object oriented fuck those language those people c c plus plus java those fuck they cre they created this this jargon polymorphism. Let me tell you what the, what what that is. Okay, a uh, polymorphism is basically is a function. It, it's a language feature. Okay, let me write it down. Let's be clear. Okay, this is the precise meaning. Not not nothing else. If you read, let's say, if you go to Wikipedia, it says something else. It is wrong. Okay, but I know it's correct because I've read Wikipedia uh, multiple times. Uh, polymorphism is a language feature okay this is important it is a language feature this is important this is a critical critical thing it is just a language feature it's a programming language feature in a programming language okay so polymorphism is a language feature where a function can have different behavior depending on the type
type of argument. Okay, that's what it means. Polymorphism is a language feature. This is the most important part. It's it's not it's not about some math idea like uh, you know or functional programming or it's a mathematical concept or no, it's a shit. Okay, polymorphism is just a programming language feature where a function can have different behavior depending on the type of argument. So, so that allows us to do things like that. You know, plus a, plus, you know, plus a b can work on numbers. You know, and or it can work on vectors, or it can work on complex numbers. Okay, so if a and b are complex numbers, any anyway, you get idea. Or it or or okay, so let me just write it out. All the A and B can be complex numbers. All the A and B can be matrices. Uh, all A and B can be tree, arbitrary tree. In that case, you have to define what plus means. You know, you want to add two trees. Tree, tree just means nested array. Okay, nested uh, list. So anyway, so the, the, the problem is that you want to write a function that can work on any different type of object or object or type depending on the language, you know, object or type or shape or whatever. So they, because, you know, so it can work on any of these uh, type, data type. So if you have a language that allows you to easily do this, then you say that language supports the feature of polymorphism. Okay, that's 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 it. Now, if you have a language that does not have polymorphism feature, you can do it yourself, and this is called ad hoc polymorphism. Okay, let me write it down. If a programming language does not let you define a function that has different behavior depending on argument then we say this language do not have the feature of polymorphism but you can always write it yourself and this is called ad hoc polymorphism and in fact JavaScript do this all the time so what do you do you write a function like th like before like that and you just check so you know you check the type of a and b so if they are numbers then you do s something I you know you, you put a condition like uh, or switch statement like I if if else if else if else you know so if a and b are vectors then you do then you return this if a and b are complex numbers you do something if it's matrices you do something else so so in essence you are creating your function does you know does what you want but you are doing it manually because you are checking you know you are doing all these if statements so this is so that if you are doing that that is called ad hoc polymorphism anyway so that that is the basic meaning of polymorphism you know that that's a main that's a meaning of polymorphism a polymorphism is a language feature where a function can have different behavior depending on the type of argument now now let, let me add I can give you some examples now exactly how a uh, polymorphism works depends on language like I said it's a language feature so in Haskell there's one way in OCaml it's another way in Mathematica it's another way okay in, in in JavaScript JavaScript doesn't doesn't really have polymorphism but you can like try it. you you can you can you know you, you basically do you do this ad hoc polymorphism you can kind of make it work so again let me emphasize it's a language feature okay polymorphism is a language feature so there's no like precise definition on how it should be because each language will do it differently but it's gen it's a general idea about a language feature that allows you to do this easily in a language 
So each language will be they they will use different mechanisms to do it. Okay, to the point like sometimes you know uh, of you guys you know talking about programming languages. Sometimes you can see you know the the term can become loose because if you are doing OOP, then you can think oh uh, I'm just going to do this or that way, which kind of achieves the same behavior of polymorphism, but not really. You know, for example, polymorphism. Again, let me say it again. It's a language feature, okay, which means it's not necessary, and also it's not a mathematical concept. You know, it's not a math concept at all. It's a, it's just a feature. It's just a extra convenience. It's a convenience, okay. So if you don't have that feature, you can either do it this way, you know, just manually code it, or you can simply write different functions for di different types. You know, you have a plus for vector, plus for matrices, plus for trees, plus for complex numbers, things like that. And and then you can also have used object oriented programming, you know, so you have a object that's plus, then, you know, dot method, you know, depending on what that method. So, so you see, so it gets fuzzy. Then, then, then anything is polymorph polymorphism now. You know, like you, you, among programmers, these idiots. You know, these people, these people will say, "Oh, we have a uh, multi dispatch or uh, things that uh, things like that." It gets it gets fuzzy. Okay. Anyway, th that's about polymorphism. And I think that's it for today. So let me paste whatever I talked about here, and that's it for today. Do I make sense? Do I am I like <laughs> is this too much rent or not enough? So seven people watching. So I, I'm about done. I'm done today. So that's about polymorphism. And actually let me show you an article. Okay, so let me show you an article. You go to polymorphism, syntax soup. Computer science. Uh, let's search for color. Okay, okay. Not it's not here. It's you go to semantic noodle. There it is. OOP. You know again, the word polymorphism is a extreme idiotic jargon. And where it came from, it is it came from it's created by these OOP idiots because their language cannot do it. So so it becomes you see, here's a history, okay? Here's how that word arose and becomes a jargon. Like everyone is like, oh oh polymorphism, this or that idiots. This OOP idiots, okay. So polymorphism, you know, it came from the OOP people. Because why? Because in functional programming typically all functional programming languages can do it. It's like it's an it's not an issue. You, you just do it naturally. But in the OOP languages, the crowd, the C, C plus plus, this fox, they don't have that. So so it, it's like it's a problem. Now it's a problem. So they are trying to find a way to do it. So they they have a jargon for it. This is you know when when they can do it, they call it oh this is polymorphism. Okay. So this article. Programming language, polymorphism, dispatch, and the tail of poly tinting. <laughs> okay, and here I have an example in what uh, JavaScript and a bunch of other things. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, yep, good. Thank you guys for watching, and that's it. So let me just post this. Link so you guys can read uh, my rant. Uh, yeah. And uh, okay, let's talk random. Let's talk random chat for three minutes. Uh, no more, no more than three or five. No more than five for sure. And let's shut down. Okay. And uh, and let me just read uh, some random comments. Let's see what you what. What you guys are talking? (Sighs) 
so I see uh, yeah honestly 65% keyboard because even with TKL what mysteries are in small back no sorry XR we will not know what I activated file vault today oh yeah I've, I've, I've used fire file vault fire file vault is a Mac OS feature where they encrypt your disk you know uh, and I've used it for like four years this is around I uh, God I don't even remember okay maybe around 2004 to 2008 uh, you know and uh, so back then I was on a Mac Mac la laptop iBook you know one of the low-end iBooks so it slows down a lot but today is probably much better uh, especially with flash drive file file vote yeah you know the the one issue with encryption is that you have the danger of losing all your data once you if you forgot your password or things like that oh password is like a hell today uh, the password issue Their software probably use it for encryption or for secure. So let me talk. Let me talk. Let let, let me uh, mention something about polymorphism again. So okay. So hold on a second. So let me. So you see, if I show this in browser, it's gonna be one bunch of text, not formatted. So I need to format it. So add a parenthesis. I mean, add a paragraph there, and uh, and. And add a code block there, and add a, add a paragraph, and add a code block. Then show in browser. Now it's pretty. Uh, you don't need a PCB and soldier it and uh, stuff. X script in in X script. Good morning. It's almost the same as you have. Oh, you you mean my hard drive? Yeah, this is good. Uh, I'm not buying Razer anymore. Okay, so there's a mountain of off-brand cheap Chinese pads and mice which do exactly the same but aren't marked up aren't marked up and need shitware you know the Chinese ones yes there are a lot of Chinese skin pads and stuff but usually they are not in good quality uh, because I have yeah usually it depends okay but usually the very cheaper cheap ones the Chinese made game pads you have lots of them you, you have 20 button mouse you know the cheap ones they are pretty bad quality so yeah where is bot wait the, oh bot there <laughs> bot what's up bot Uh Hey, bye guys. <laughs>